Hey, welcome to Mix Life number 73. Uh, it's pretty much just me here, it looks like. So I was just going to pop in. We uh, recently switched our time slot over from Sundays. And so I figured not a great look to completely ditch the time slot. So instead, we're just going to do like a quick breezy Q&A. If there's anybody in the chat, for God's sake, please help me here. There we go. Train Sonic. How's it going, my man? <laughs> but yeah, no, you're stuck with another uh, concrete Q&A session unless somebody else from Mixed Life jumps in. So it's going to be a disaster. Um, so yeah, stuff I've been working on. I've been getting back to doing some testing. I had to take a couple of weeks out to do some work on some cool things, one of which involved a whole bunch of other e-juice makers people. So be on the lookout for that. Um, we're going to have like big announcements and stuff. Uh, the other thing next week, we should have, um, like an announcement about the Vegas show and be able to give away some tickets for anybody that, that would be able to attend. So we're going to actually be give, giving out free shit, which almost never happens on Miss Life. So I'd like to take credit for that, but really it's Bryson at Favora. So, um, stuff I've been testing. I've been working with uh, some of the Vape Train creams lately, actually. That's what I've been in the middle of. I wrote a flavor note, my own personal website about uh, Vape Train's vanilla cream. Been going over Vape Train's ice cream and Vape Train's butter cream. I do have to say out of all of them, I think butter cream so far is my favorite. Uh, I think you should definitely go out and get butter cream if you're under frosting. Hey, Carolina Vapen, good evening to you too. Um, yeah, if you're into frosting at all, cat, uh, Vape Train's vanilla buttercream is actually pretty great. I think you do have to crank it way up to get something deeply satisfying out of it. I think I was talking to uh, Chemo, who said, yeah, just turn it up to like 8%, 10%, and it will be delicious. And no, he's right. Absolutely delicious. It blows Cap's buttercream out of the water on anything but waxy texture. Uh, tastes a whole hell of a lot more like actual frosting. Uh, in a way, Shisha Vanilla is kind of one of my go-tos for a vanilla frosting just because it has that thicker waxy body, but I feel like their uh, Vape Trains Vanilla Buttercream does a better job of it. So that was a really pleasant surprise. Um, yeah, vanilla cream. I don't get vanilla creams. I've ranted about this before. Oh, I got the buttercream last week. Might not work for what I'm going for, though. Uh, hey, it, on the bright side, though, you got a pretty, pretty rocking flavor. I've been super impressed by it. Uh, the normal vanilla cream, it's perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I don't really get vanilla creams, though. Uh, most vanillas are already going to be kind of creamy, if not like a dairy creamy, at least have that kind of like creme texture and body to it. It's a solid entry, but yeah, I can't think of much to do with it beyond just like add some vanilla to other creams. It's a little bit thin by itself to really work as like a whipped cream, but I could add vanilla to a whipped cream. Um... But yeah, I mean, it's vanilla cream. It's okay. The vanilla ice cream, I've kind of been going back and forth on. So I was expecting something a little bit richer, I want to say. Uh, Vape Trans really impressed me so far with some of their like really rich buttery notes. Like they seem to do that fairly well. And the vanilla ice cream, it's solid, uh, but it's not as rich as like TPA's VBIC or Liquid Barn's vanilla ice cream. Uh, it doesn't have that same kind of like deep buttery punch to it really. And so I think if you taste black pepper and you don't want to like mute out your mix with some Hankson vanilla, uh, like French vanilla ice cream, I think it's a pretty solid option overall. Um, it's a little bit thicker than Flavor West and Caps as far as I can tell and the vanilla is a little bit better. So I think it's probably a decent weapon for like pepper tasters who don't necessarily want to like completely abandon the idea of dap and go like completely virtuous with their mixes. But it it's reasonably rich without having any kind of black pepper notes for me. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yes, Rusty T, I am holding down the fort by myself tonight. I think Koppel and Adam probably died. That's going to be my guess. I haven't heard from him about it. So I figured, you know, fuck it. We'll just go ahead and we'll do it live. <laughs> Howdy, Burgundy. Um, yeah, so just really chilling. If there's anything that you guys want to talk about at all, I was probably just going to hang around, let everybody stare at my face for a while here because uh, everybody needs to do that. But didn't really have anything all too serious planned. I was maybe going to run over a couple of the Liquid Bar and One Shots I've been meaning to test forever. Felt like that was like content enough. So um, we'll see what happens though. Hello, Burgundy. 
Uh, I feel like I can't say it because Fresh says it, but a whale's vagina to you? I, I, I don't know if that's stepping on Fresh's toes. Um, yeah, no, we can definitely divvy their shit up. I have some addresses. We'll just go through. They probably aren't there. If they are, they're just dodging me. So we'll steal their shit anyway. It, we're we're going to be on that home invasion tip. Uh, mix life. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm just background noise. I like that. That's probably, that works out better for everybody involved. If you can just vaguely hear me in the background, you actually have to look or really intently listen to the things I say. I love you too, Gringo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, after I get done with some uh, vape train creams, I got some vape train toffees to burn through. And then I'm going to be over vape train for a while. Um, I think I'm going to go back and my big plan right now is to go through and do a bunch of like classic flavors and do flavor notes on those and some videos on those. So <laughs> it's bobsled time indeed. Um, cool runnings. I don't know. I haven't watched that in like 10 years. I wonder if that holds up or cause it's a Disney movie. Right. But I don't remember it being especially saccharine. It was kind of good. So hopefully that, that works out. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing. Mixed Life is starting a bobsled team. None of us are Jamaican, but <laughs> I feel like if you push me down a hill in a sled, I could get going really fast because I have a whole bunch of mass. So, <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I'm not seeing anything. Um, here we go. We're going to talk about some Liquid Barn one shots. We're going to talk about some I've been kind of hinting about forever. If you have any extra like questions or whatever, go ahead and throw them out there. But I figure I got to fill the dead air some somehow. This has to make at least 15 minutes to actually be a show. So uh, I'm excited for the toffees too. Uh, I have worked a decent amount with uh, Vape Train Honeycomb, which is really cool. Nothing to do with honey. Everybody's already said that. It's like a, like a crispy toffee made with golden syrup that's like in non-American countries and candy bars and stuff. Um, so I know that one's really solid. I've heard really good things from Graham about the toffee ice cream. I believe I have the English toffee and I have hard crack toffee and hard crack toffee is basically just the burnt parts of, uh, caramel, which wasn't necessarily something that I was clamoring out for, but Hey, it's a flavor that exists. So I still got to go into more detail on some of those stuff. Oh, so uh, we've been talking about it for a while. Uh, that I've been really impressed by Liquid Barn's new one shots. Uh, they're actually super, super solid. And I realize probably talking to a DIY audience, but maybe we'll spam search engine optimization or whatever and like put it in the description so somebody happens on here. But um, yeah, these are kind of awesome. They're a new uh, craft line of one shots. Um, they're. Technically, I guess branded re-up, but they're done by the people who do craft vapor. Uh, how would you get a good strawberry out of Flavora Alpine? I tried Red Touch Straw and a bit of Dragon, still a bit dry. What would you recommend to get a good strawberry with Alpine? <laughs> well, on the Jamaican bobsled team, uh, I hear what they do is... Okay, so if you want a good strawberry using Alpine, it's already a little bit green. Uh, Red Touch by Flavor Art is more realistic, but it still can get a little bit dry. I think adding in the dragon fruit isn't a bad thing in general, but uh, you probably want a different strawberry to work with that Alpine rather than Red Touch because it's going to be like green to the point where it's unpleasant. Um, I, I don't use a ton of strawberries. My taste buds are stupid, uh, but... I'd probably say if, if you wanted to stay with flavor art, uh, their juicy strawberry would probably be better at, with it. Um, shisha strawberry would be good too. If you are using Alpine and shisha, they have a lot of the same kind of like strawberry hard candy notes that kind of taste a little green and plasticky to me. So you want to keep that Alpine strawberry super low if you're using shisha strawberry, like under a quarter of a percent, unless you're like mixing for like a mouth to lung or a pod system that you can crank it up a little bit. But I probably start off if you wanted to use those two strawberries specifically at like 0.15% Alpine and maybe one and a half percent shisha strawberry. 
Uh, but yeah, with that alpine, you're already kind of taking the strawberry in a very specific direction. Dragon fruit's good though. Keep the dragon fruit. Um, that should end up being a little bit less dry for you though. Yeah, shisha strawberry is awesome. Uh, out of all of the strawberries, I can't really taste all that well. Shisha strawberry is probably the least offensive to me. So yeah, shout out to Inawera. Hey, Scott Miller, uh, you have stumbled into me desperately trying to fill time on a show by myself to punish Koppel and Adam for their insolence. They ghosted me and they will pay. So I'm going to burn this shit down. <laughs> oh, speaking of strawberry, though. Uh, so one of the things that I was actually really impressed with with these Liquid Barn Craft one shots, they have a Red Delight flavor. Um, that's supposed to be like strawberry sour belts and it's super, super solid. I'm going to mix them up live here. I have one of their like basic bottles. So I'm just putting in the 16% flavor, the cool little lift off top thing. And boom, I just made DIY juice. We should really spam the search engine optimization for that. Um, but one of the things I was the most impressed with so I'm not gonna say it probably tastes perfect because I have that problem with strawberries, but uh, for somebody who can't taste a lot of strawberries, it actually works out really, really well. There's the one thing about using these uh, basic bottles. They give you a little bit of headroom even at 16%, but you still gotta shake the ever loving hell out of them. They haven't cracked that part of the code yet. There's still a whole bunch of manual shaking involved. But super easy way to make juice, and that's cool. Just watch me as I shake juice. I've turned into fresh in so many ways. I would only be so lucky. Oh, that looks about mixed. But yeah, super solid stuff. Been really enjoying it. I feel like uh, these are the kind of flavors that, like, even if you're not mixing with them, all the time. Um, it's super handy to have some of these bottles around. I've already, a lot of the liquid barn one shots that I get, I've already like mixed up when like somebody asked me for juice. I'll just be like, here, you'll like this. And it's easy to trust some of these profiles. Oh, and like the red delight, which is a strawberry sour belt, the purple delight, which is a great bubble gum and the um, green delight. I think it's just called the green delight, which is like a green apple hard candy flavor. All super solid, and yeah, it's easy stuff to pawn off on somebody, so they leave you alone and stop asking for free juice. Hey, Emily. Um, yeah, Scott Miller, I really, really do like Deer Lodge, actually. I don't think there's anything in there that I'm hesitant about people buying, too, so if you did want to try it out, that'd be awesome. Uh, Yakima Hops is the best thing in the world, so. <laughs> yeah, the, the basic bottles, when shit goes down, I'm going to have, like, an entire pick up bed full of just basic bottles and try scalping them to other vapors in the apocalypse because really the kind of people who vape are definitely going to be the ones who survive the first wave <laughs> i'll be out there and like yeah some of myself there's a link in the chat if you want to in the mix life chat if you want to jump in dave you can make fun of me to my place uh my face but no, I'm going to go like full Mad Max and have a bandolier of these while I go search for the bullet farm, whatever. That kind of fell apart at the end there. But the point is, I like the apocalypse mixing idea. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I don't taste a lot of strawberry. This is surprisingly solid. I'll probably not be able to taste the strawberry in about five, ten minutes. But it's really hard to be mad at that. So uh, some of the other stuff that they put out, I wasn't completely sold on some of it for profile reasons. And I don't know. I just don't think those my man juices are very good. Um, those didn't work for me at all. But uh, like Water Malone, the famous Water Malone and Song Pelliant from uh, DIY or Die. That's kind of more in my wheelhouse. And I've been really enjoying those. These new craft ones are awesome. So we should all probably just give up at this point because like, the fact that you can take the spout out of the bottles means that mixing by itself is irrelevant. Oh. 
in uh, vaping news, they raided the offices of Juul, which is kind of terrifying. I didn't think that Juul was doing anything to piss people off enough to have like federal agents taking papers and stuff. But yeah, so that's kind of terrifying. Uh, maybe Juul isn't the good kid of the industry and they're the ones who are going to be whacked and leave us all to operate in the gray market. And you know what's good for the gray market? DIY juice. So uh, make sure you got your bathtub juice empire going on. Now I'll just make fun of you from here. It's whisper quiet right now until I'm 100% sure my monstrous children are 100% asleep. You just hold a pillow over their face. I mean, that helps. <laughs> Was it just documents that were due? Because like all of the news coverage that I read said raid, but then again, I pretty much just skimmed it and started freaking out and hoarding. And I, I, I agree at this point, fuck the FDA. I like, it makes it so hard to be supportive of government stuff in general when like the one small hobby pleasure I allow myself is being directly targeted for marketing to the kids. So come on, like this is the last thing I have I've got going on, people. If you take away my vaping, I'm pretty much just screwed. All right, Raid was a bit sensationalized by the media. Yeah, I mean that that never happens. So <laughs> Carolina vaping says Benadryl instead of just holding a pillow over their noses. Um, that's probably slightly more defensible in court. I'm as your lawyer, I advise you listen to him. I like that. When I was growing up in the 80s, 90s, I wish so hard to grow up in America and not Scotland. Oh, how things change. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to get like put into a camp somewhere if I say any more. But hey, at least Scott Gottlieb is going to save children from the evils of a less harmful smoking alternative. So really makes you proud. I don't think um, I don't think Kraft really cracked the sour thing. I think that's still kind of kind of up in the air. I just mixed a sample of this fresh, and then I have one that's been sitting around for a while, and it has some of that like malic acid, citric acid thing, or whatever. That's kind of dulling the flavor a little bit. I feel like this is actually really good, like mixed fresh, and maybe like let it sit overnight, which works perfectly fine for like the intended audience. Um, not really a steeper, but I don't think that's going to be a problem with the target market. Uh, but yeah, I get strawberry. It feels like there's a little bit of something backing it up. Uh, sometimes in these like strawberry candy juices, they try to sneak some watermelon in on you. And I don't necessarily know if I get watermelon kind of tastes almost more like an apple, but Maybe there's a little bit of watermelon in there, but it's it's like a super familiar profile. That strawberry, nice sweet right down the middle strawberry. Um, it's good though. Okay, so you live in Scotland, you only drink Jack and Coke. Hey, you know I can't blame you. Maybe just not that particular Tennessee whiskey. Maybe maybe go for a different bourbon. Just saying, there's, there's there's a lot better ones out there. <laughs> See, if if you're a metal kid, you should just quit right now and go to drink an Old Crow. Old Crow bourbon with uh, probably off-brand soda is the most metal cocktail you can have short of drinking the blood of sacrificial virgins. See, Knob Creek, if you want good whiskey, but... I'm sticking in, in the, the metal kit thing. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Burgundy. I think that's why we get along. We used to we used to have an entire like thing about drinking old crow. I, I had like my old crow t-shirt drinking old crow because I was stupid. I'm still stupid, but not that kind of stupid anymore. 
uh, we used to scream at each other that we were going to get pecked and then go like caca with the old crow thing. It was a long, elaborate thing and basically an excuse to drink unhealthy amounts of whiskey. <laughs> See, and that's a good thing because I don't think Burgundy was a metal kid. I think Burgundy was more of a crust punk. So it's a place where the metal kid and the crust punk community can come together. Is old crow. Because there's there's some very subtle but very important differences between crust punks and metal kids. Um, most of the metal kids are mostly out to party, and the crust punks still like to get fucked up, but they claim it's for like a purpose. So that's cool. Uh, I feel like crust punks will willingly put up with bad hardcore bands a lot more readily than a metal kid will put up with a bad metal band. Like, you still can't convince me that something like Earth Crisis is actually music. <laughs> See, and then there's the overlap between crust punks and general punks who become homeless. That's fine, too. I think a crust punk is basically a general punk who becomes homeless, but also believes in veganism. And you have that super cool, like Lawrence arm shirt. So it's really hard to uh, argue with your punk cred. I kind of want that Lawrence arm shirt. <laughs> See, Old Crow and Motorhead, you are exactly right, Gringo. That is the nexus of hardcore punk and metal culture right there. Everybody loves Motorhead. And Lemmy was the man. That, that man had a heroic tolerance for, for uh, substances. And they got away with playing pretty much the same music for like 30 years. It was great. <laughs> yeah, see, that pink letter one is a keeper. So I may have already said this, but did you know that the... Uh, the dude, Brendan Kelly, I want to say, from the Lawrence Arbs ended up running the Nihilist Arby's Twitter account, which was like my mind blowing, like factoid of the day. Like you have uh, the dude who was in Slapshot and then you have like the dude running the Nihilist Arby's. 90s hip hop is solid. You should uh, you should check out Stopgap if you want to listen to Pretty Matthew from Charlie Noble wax extensively about 90s hip hop. There's there's lots of that. <laughs> uh myself, I don't know. I still listen to some metal. Um it's been getting a little bit softer lately. I really like the new Death Heaven album. I think that's probably my favorite metal album of the last couple of years. Um hip hop, I don't know. The the Carter was pretty good. Um the Carter 5, it's it's good to see like Little Wayne was still like rhyming and stuff, but like a lot of it was super like dirgy and low energy. But the songs he did actually perk up a little bit was uh, pretty good. There's a song in there called Mona Lisa with Kendrick Lamar, which is just straight fire. Um, but yeah, the rest of the album gets a little bit too like in his feelings. And somebody asked for a link for my flavor note site. I will get that for you. Okay, it is tasteofconcrete.com. It is still very much a work in progress. Um, very much a work in progress. So uh, theoretically, I still need to backfill over a year worth of Reddit notes. I took a little bit of time off to work on some stuff, but I'm posting new flavor notes there. Um, so that that's going to get better. I was kind of holding off on like, launching it before everything was in place and then I realized exactly how lazy I am and then that would never actually happen if I waited until everything was done. So you guys get the uh, developmental version of it. And MF Doom is a legend. Um, yeah, MF Doom's great. It's kind of a shame that like you can't actually go see an MF Doom concert anymore though because he pulled that thing with having the fake rappers. So like Nobody wants to actually pay to see if they're going to get screwed by MF Doom. <laughs> and thank you, Rusty T. Um, yeah, it's a pretty minimalist design, really, because 
that's the thing about vaping and mixing I guess more so than vaping. It's not a super visual medium. So it's kind of more just like a blog thing. And I stole some Im images from um, the actual manufacturers and I provide some video links on there. I've been meaning to expand a whole bunch of stuff, but really there's always flavors to test. So it kind of devolves into that. So I'm glad you're enjoying it though. I really do appreciate people going there and watching like my YouTube videos and continuing to support Mix Life, even though this is. <laughs> Another show where I'm just trying to ruin our monetization. I don't often log in the Mixed Life account, but when I do, I see horrifying stuff like Adam's been holding out on like $4.50 for a monetization. So I don't know how that splits 14 ways, but I feel like I'm getting ripped off. I want to put that out there right now. <laughs> That's a quarter that I should get from all of this quality YouTube content. So anybody have any like mixing questions? Because I feel like I've ran through all my charming for the day already. Oh, there's Mr. Pudding. Actually, fuck yeah, that's what we can do. Alfred Pudding, I'm happy to see you. Um, so you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna give a recipe review live on the air because I mixed up Alfred Pudding's Alfred's Pudding and uh, I'm going to give it a shot and see how it works. I had talked to him a little bit when he was developing it, but I, I want to go through the recipe right now and it should be all sorts of fun. Oh, that is assuming that I have anything approaching a clean atomizer around here. Give me a second. I'm going to like dig around. <laughs> Old Velocity 2 clone. Fuck yeah, we'll do that. Here's a big question, does it have coils? No, it doesn't. Atomizer I own is dirty or doesn't have coils. This is so bad. There we go. It's not my favorite atomizer in the world, but it's clean and it has coils. Um, got a Goon LP here, which is slightly less bad than the normal Goon in terms of flavor. It looks like I got some kind of Clapton's in there. Run about 0.2 ohms. No work. So, uh, friend who you may or may not have seen around is Bosnian, and he managed to send me a whole bunch of really cool, like specialty cotton. And I have uh, found that I don't use it nearly as much because I still use Muji pads and I seriously just like a savage rip off strips of them as I go. Have I ever had an all day vape that you mixed up several times? Um, not in a while, honestly. Uh, and usually then it was kind of my own recipes just for testing. Um, I do mix a little bit for other people, and I have mixed an insane amount of Apex's Blue Frost Revisited for somebody who absolutely digs that stuff. He'll go through like 500 milliliters of it in a month. Um, so, I mean, somebody was all day vaping that. Uh, I mix up good amounts of Fiestas and Fiascos. I still go back to that occasionally. And with fall coming around, I've actually been vaping a strange amount of uh, my own Deer Lodge. Yes, I am an animal. Don't worry though. Like I make sure to only handle on one edge and then I just clip the parts that are saturated with my filthy finger oils. So generally we're okay.
See, this is the fastening part where I'm rewicking an atomizer on air. Okay, we are locked in and ready to go. So full disclosure, uh, Alfred Pudding came to me and basically used me as a sounding board for the recipe. Um, Pointing him in some flavor directions and stuff like that. But like when he says that I helped him, I did very little except bullshit on uh, Discord with him. So this is uh, very squarely in his camp, but I'm excited to give it a shot. It was one of those things where I was a jerk and I was like, oh yeah, no, I'll mix it up in a couple of days. I'll mix it up in a couple of days. And then he like finished it and released it. I was like, okay, well, cool. I'm glad that worked out. Oh, wow. Alfred Pudding. Rin's banana put in. Um, hey, whatever she wants to do with a banana, Rin's cool as hell. If she's doing it, I'll do it too. I just want to do what the cool kids do. Oh, God, this is the worst thing in the world. Uh, one of the LDP bottles where the tip's too small, so you got to ram like a coil jig down to actually make it so you can squeeze stuff out of it effectively. Which goes perfectly fine nine out of ten times, and then like the one time it doesn't go fine, you end up wearing your juice. It's more of a cautionary tale than anything else. Okay. Here we go. We're wicked with Alfred's pudding. I will uh Bring up the recipe description here. I don't trust myself enough to share a screen and not fuck it up, but I can definitely, definitely read it. Oh, just one second here. Alltheflavors.com, nice snappy uh, website. I'm glad that Q2 updated that because it's really been immensely better lately. Okay, Alfred's Pudding. So what we got, we got a vanilla pudding recipe. Um, it's 2% FA bourbon, 0.75% uh, Inawara custard, 1.5% Vape Trains golden syrup, 0.75% Favora sweet coconut, and 3.5% Favora vanilla pudding. Nice, simple recipe. I like it. Kind of narrowed it down a little bit from where it was. Uh, so after trying out numerous vanilla flavorings, I was still unhappy with the results. I want them to bring some serious depth to the vanilla from Favora Vanilla Pudding without altering the texture. This is like one of the things that I actually think that we talked about a little bit. So in talking about vanilla, um, most of the vanillas that you run into, like I was saying, like they're creamy, right? And so... <laughs> I just caught the professional bullshitter thing. I think a professional gets paid to bullshit. And I, I, I don't think you can count anything I get as getting paid yet. But thank you for noticing. Um, so the vanilla, right? A couple of the only vanillas that actually do anything that doesn't alter texture. You're looking at something that's heavy on vanilla. And I like FA's vanilla bourbon because it's a little bit darker and a little bit spicier. And that's not something you necessarily get with a lot of vanillas. Uh there's golden syrup in here too, which is really cool. If you're unfamiliar with golden syrup, it is a treacle syrup. Um, it's kind of like a fancy kind of caramelized invert sugar. It's a vape train flavor, which I found it's been working out pretty well wherever I try to use it, which has been nice. Uh, uses 1.5% of that. So it's going to give it like that vanilla, like a little bit more depth and richness to it. Flavors vanilla pudding. Honestly, it's hard to go wrong with that. I love that. That is essentially 95% of my Deer Lodge recipe, too. It's just some extra accoutrement on top of that. Uh, the Innerware Custard, hard to go wrong there. Adds a lot, nice little bit of eggy richness without, like, adding a crazy steep time or doing anything particularly weird to the flavor. Um, yeah, no, my mustache does command authority. I have the mustache of a fat Southern sheriff and the ideology of anything but. So it's confusing. It keeps people off their toes, which is nice. Got to fold down these coils a little bit. They're running up crazy high. 
Oh, shit. No, this is uh, where I had taken the Goon deck and put it in the Goon LP because I liked it a little bit more. Also, there appeared to be part of an O-ring in there. That would uh, be a problem. Okay, let's give that another shot. Point one three ohms, eighty watts. It's good. I um I definitely dig what you're trying to do here. Like that's one of the things that I liked about the idea for the recipe is like it's some of the darker, spicier parts, but not necessarily as dry. I want to say is something like uh like a heavier brulee thing, like. Uh, you're saying in a way a creme brulee would be great in that pudding. Yeah, I think it'd be great in that pudding, but I think you'd have to swap it out with the golden syrup. And that golden syrup has a little bit of like a really cool, like buttery effect that I don't necessarily get in exactly the same way with in a way a creme brulee. <laughs> and he has a good point too. You can't trust in a any further than you can throw them. And as far as I know, they're the entire country of Poland. They keep reformulating stuff. So anytime, if you want something like a touchstone recipe going forward, it's probably good to avoid in a wear in case they completely just piss in your Cheerios. <laughs> I have not tried one-on-one uh, -on -one creme brulee, but I do have to say I've picked up a couple of one-on-one -on -one flavors, mostly the ones that Bull City has been carrying, and I've been pretty pleasant pleasantly surprised, but I think somebody's doing some serious curation there. Okay, so one of the things that I like about this is it's a fairly simple profile, and I don't mean like simple in any kind of derogatory sense. I just mean that it's a single idea executed very well. You don't have to worry about a whole bunch of like layering or anything like that. It's essentially just trying to make like his namesake pudding. And so I really appreciate that. So it's everything that's in here is here to modify that pudding base. And I think it's doing a really good job. Uh, I've had this steeping for, I wanna say about three days at this point. I think I mixed it up on Monday morning. Um, and I think it probably needs a little bit more steep time. Uh, for me right now at three days, the vanilla is coming through maybe just a little bit dry, but I think that's kind of a function of the amount of vanilla and the kind of vanillas that were used. I think it's going to mellow out quite a bit in time. Uh, the sweet coconut thing, um, I like that. You can't taste coconut in here. It's that old mixing trick. And I'm sure if he he's heard it from other people before me and could have found it out from a dozen other people. Uh, but if you add a little bit of coconut into a cream, it kind of boosts up the general like creaminess of it without adding any specific coconut flavor. And it seems to be doing that really, really well, which is awesome. Yeah, I get coconut from Inawara Biscuit, um, what Emily is talking about. Uh, it's one of those things that like once you taste it, it's kind of hard to untaste it. I taste the same kind of like, I guess it's gamma octalone is what I've heard people say. Um, it has kind of a coconut nuance to it. I get it in uh, TFA's Cheesecake Graham Crust, Capella Silver Line Biscuit, that like kind of genre of like crumbly, buttery cookie uh, tends to show up quite a bit. Emily, again, with the solid point, um, it's less prominent in Jungle Flavors Biscuit. So Jungle Flavors Biscuit, if you can get your hands on it, really solid option. Spending four hundred dollars at one on one, man, you are brave. <laughs> I ad I admire the balls. I I really do. Uh, you'll have to report back and 
say what else besides the creme brulee and some of the other well-known ones, uh, which other flavors are actually pretty good from them. <laughs> Peppermint from Favora Mango, Carolina Vapen. That is a brand new one for me. That is literally the first time that I had heard that. That's amazing. I have no idea what's wrong with you. It's great. Ah, <laughs> uh, see, Rusty T, if I could get Jungle Flavors at Nicotine River or Bull City Flavors, I would be all over it. Me too. I um, I liked the fact that you could get Jungle at Chef's, but I guess they're phasing that out, which kind of means that I have to order from ECX, uh, which usually isn't a big deal. I just, like, I like having everything, like, from bull city that's where i get like 95 percent of my stuff and some of the other like random stuff i need i pick up from chefs those are usually my two go-to's for flavor houses i don't order from ecx nearly enough they're in the same state as me and it's kind of a bummer because i have to pay sales tax and it's usually like the extra nine percent is usually enough to put me off and get me ordering from bull city Yeah, the more I'm vaping of this, the more I'm liking it. I like the fact that it isn't too sweet. It's not too, like, eggy or too buttery, which I feel like you can run into with a lot of, like, richer, creamier recipes. I feel like it's balanced really well. Um, I really do like the darker take on vanilla here. I think that that dark route for the vanilla with the extra golden syrup, I think that was a really, really good choice. Um, I really like this. It's a simple profile done incredibly well. So uh, I'll give it a couple more days before like I go ahead and I star it. It isn't something that's necessarily in my flavor wheelhouse in terms of what I'd vape every day, but that's my own damage. Um, but yeah, if that vanilla settles down a little bit, which I'm thinking it will, and a little bit more of that like milky creaminess comes out from the pudding, I think that's definitely something that you should mix up if you're into the profile at all. See, somebody has to be the one biting the bullet and spending $400 at one-on-one. -on -one to to try everything so you are doing the lord's work thank you very much you have my sincere thanks <laughs> yeah for uh grabbing a random atomizer that i don't really care for all that much and randomly haphazardly rewicking it that's actually really good <laughs> It's it. Don't worry, Alfred Pudding. It's not that big of a moment. I literally just show up on other people's live streams and talk shit. So, <laughs> but for what it's worth, you definitely had the Concrete River seal of approval on this. Good work, my man. It's funny. I mix up most of my testers in like 10 milliliter bottles just because I always have like something I need to be vaping. And uh, I'm really happy I went ahead and made up a bigger bottle of this. So that's awesome. Yeah, good job all around, Alfred. Actually, I want to like comment, like I think you're cool as hell, man. Um, like I don't remember seeing you too long ago, but like you've sort of picked up everything and yeah, it's, it's really cool. So thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing the recipe and thanks for like, letting me be the sounding board for your ideas. I'm, I'm really happy it turned out as well as it did. And for not like asking for like tips and tricks on how to get 10 layers separated and perfect and all that. This is actually just more about knowing the flavors and knowing which direction to go to. It's, it's nice. <laughs> See, it's, it's more than a crush because crushes are generally unreciprocated and I, I feel like he likes me too. So this could be going somewhere. You do have to contend with Mr. Burgundy though, because I feel like he's my internet mixing bay. So do, do kids say bay <laughs> still? Yeah, like I don't wanna I, I don't wanna shit talk people who get like super enthusiastic or whatever and then like go off on their own tangents and then get frustrated when it doesn't work. But like 
we don't know everything, obviously. We're just like random people on the internet, but it's really cool to um, it's it's really cool to see somebody who like is saying, hey, you know, like we can actually put into practice some of the random stuff that people on the internet are spewing about DIY mixing. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, it's apparently going to be a threesome and I'm super into it. So mix life 73, I'm super into threesomes <laughs> with, with internet mixing dudes. It, it's just like some big freaky polyamorous commune shit. So yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to be the meat and a cool dude sandwich. <laughs> That's literally all I wanted from my internet vaping career. So I'm happy. Yeah, don't, don't worry. We'll be live streaming the entire thing. It's going to get freaky. It's going to get super freaky. Um, yeah, so yeah, I talked about some flavors. We did a little bit of mixing. I uh, talked about this recipe, which Alfred's Pudding by Alfred Pudding. Um, again, if you're into puddings, just pull the trigger, get all the stuff. You'll use it other places. There's no flavors in here that are like super niche or one or one use. So definitely worth it. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, I'm never going to get my share of that four dollars and eighty six cents rusty tea. <laughs> complaining about not getting not getting my cut of, of the monetization and then I start making threesome jokes so whatever okay so uh, anybody have any questions concerns pipe bombs before I go ahead and shut this thing down figure you've endured me for long enough this evening Aw. Shout out to Dimlin. Who doesn't want a big old bear hug from Concrete? I got that going for me. I definitely do uh, give a good bear hug. <laughs> See, it's a tricycle that nobody looks ridiculous on. Uh, well, apparently Koppel isn't dead, so we're just going to be robbing uh, Chemist's house, though. So he has that to look forward to, coming for him in the middle of the night. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. I'm going to go eat me some uh, stir fry, made some stir fry for dinner. So I uh, did want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Mix Life number 73, in which I tried to come up with a title and just decided I didn't have anything witty to say. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, remember, if you want to support more nonsense like this, we have the one-shot line at Wizard Labs. We have the one-shot line at chefsflavors.co.uk. Uh, buy some EGM stuff, send your receipt to Koppel. He'll send you some hot, greasy nudes. Everything will be great. Uh, thanks for watching. I will catch you later. <laughs>